the local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 9 on X49. It's really important right now for our community to come together. Like, you see all the schools protesting, not just Lanfear. Um, that's what he would have wanted. An arrest has been made in the stabbing death of a Springfield High School student. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hageman. A 15-year-old girl was taken into custody this morning. She's been charged with first-degree murder. Two students were stabbed during a fight at Lamphere High School on Wednesday. 18-year-old Pierre Scott died, and a 16-year-old should be all right. And students held a vigil this afternoon. They released balloons honoring Scott's life. It was held outside Lamphere High School for friends, family, and community leaders. Earlier today, students from all three Springfield's public schools staged a walkout to call for more safety measures, but they also wanted to remember their friend. He was never sad. He didn't like sad people. Anytime I was sad, he had come. It's like, cheer up, sis. Like, no, make sure everybody's straight. Springfield Public Schools released a statement following today's walkout saying they will continue to support any efforts for healing students in need. Well, here's an update tonight. Urbana police are looking for more information about a shooting outside a hospital. It happened last night at Carl. Detectives believe the 28-year-old victim was in fact targeted. Police say the shot came from a vehicle and the driver quickly took off. They say the bullet grazed him as he was visiting someone. He was treated and then released. Police say they're still looking for that vehicle involved. And a few hours later, more shots were fired nearby in Urbana. Police say that happened around 9.15 at the intersection of Bradley and Matthews. A criminal investigations lieutenant tells us they're looking for a connection between the two shootings, but they haven't found one yet. Lieutenant says this shooting was a drive-by and police are looking for a white sedan. That's the best description for the suspect vehicle right now. We do have more details online, including why police are unsure whether this shooting was in fact targeted. Here's a follow-up story for tonight. Many people in Champaign County are against a controversial vote the board approved last night. All but one board member voted yes, approving a $20 million consolidation of the county's two jails. But that was after nearly an hour of community input. About a dozen people spoke against putting millions into a jail project. They said they wanted to see crime prevention. One man called the jail proposal reactionary to the recent violence. But you're not actively giving the children outside of the jails proper social, emotional, social and emotional learning programs for them to develop themselves. What about the homeless individuals who know that they will seek or receive trash medical care and costs in county jail before they get it at Carl Hospital? We won't build a society free of harm by funding the institutions that perpetuate it. Two people spoke in support of it. One was the county jail superintendent. She begged the speakers to put themselves in her shoes, running a downtown jail that is not meeting those inspection standards. And we have more information about this story online, including an interview with the sheriff. A Taylorville man pulled a driver from a car that was seconds away from being hit by a train right here. Today, Christian County Sheriff Bruce Kettlecamp honored that man. And WCI3's Cole Hankey was there and has this story. Brandon Gatton was driving home Monday night when he spotted something he couldn't believe. I saw something in the corner of my eye. I was like, some, that didn't look right. I slowed down and I pulled over and I looked up and realized, I was like, oh my God, there's a truck on the tracks. A truck was stopped on a set of train tracks on the south side of Taylorville. Gatton had a friend call the police and started trying to get the driver out before an incoming train could destroy the truck. I happened to look to my left, right down those railroad tracks and saw the light as the train was crossing Houston Street. Gatton pulled the driver out just in time. I just, I just latched, onto him, latched onto him and fought him and pulled him out of the vehicle, and I pulled him as far and as hard as I could uh, to right about where you're, uh, a little bit past where you're standing right now, and just proceeded to tell him to lay down, lay flat. Christian County Sheriff Bruce Kettlecamp honored Gatton with the Christian County Lifesaver Award. Well, I think it's very important to recognize people when they step up and help other people. And that's, you know, that's what it, you know, I think that's what life is all about. Gatton says he will be meeting with the driver soon for the first time since earlier this week. He only has one question for him. It's, that's, that's, really, that's really all it's about. I just, I just want to know that he's, that he's all right. Reporting in Taylorville, I'm Cole Hankey, WCIA3, your local news leader.
And the sheriff said the driver of that truck was cited for driving under the influence and he was released recently from custody. Central Illinois continues to experience a shortage of bus drivers. The latest one is in Sangamon County. The Williamsville Sherman School District says its number two route is canceled because of a lack of drivers and substitutes. That started today with both morning and nighttime routes. That'll be the case through next Tuesday. Parents and families of students who ride bus number two will be responsible for taking their students to and from school. The district hopes the routes will resume November 29th. One Central Illinois school is looking to change their mascot. Thomasboro Grade School's mascot is an Indian. Community leaders addressed the issue over the summer, and the board put out a survey just last month. We caught up with one former student who wants the mascot to stay because he has good memories of his basketball team. Yeah, the name may not be cultural appropriative like everyone likes. It still means a lot to me being a part of that school. And people in the community and students can read that survey and vote. We posted it to our website at WCIA.com. One city is being recognized for its inclusivity. The city of Champaign has been honored for the LGBTQ policies and services. The 10th Annual Municipal Equality Index, or MEI, rated Champaign as the second highest scoring municipality in the entire state. They base the rating on non-discrimination laws. The city has an employer law enforcement and leadership equality for LGBTQ members as well. Champaign got a score of 94. That was a 10 percent, uh, 10 point difference from just last year. It's nice to continue to be recognized because what that means is we continue to make progress. We continue to uh, be welcoming. We continue to be open and affirming for those who are part of this community. It went on to say they will continue to work to improve and grow that very score. A verdict has been reached in a controversial case, what the jury has decided. Plus, the FDA has approved COVID booster shots for every single adult. What you need to know about that very decision and how it's going to impact people across the area. All right, Jacob, a little chilly out there right now. Is that going to be the case this weekend? Yeah, the weekend actually looks warm. Warmer relative turn, though. We're not talking <laughs> summer heat or you know, anything too nice out there, but at least warm enough where any rain that is expected to fall Saturday night into Sunday, it comes down as rain. No snow, anything like that. Seems like the better chance for rain Saturday night into Sunday morning would be to the south. Still, though, lots of dry time for the weekend forecast. We'll time it out for you coming up after this.